Hey, Reef to Reef family, community. This is Don, AKA Flippers for Pups. And this is how I do a water change in my 125 gallon reef system via my basement sump. So let's get to it. Okay, so here we are. We're downstairs. My grandkids are running around upstairs. Uh, we're downstairs below the 125 gallon reef above on the first floor. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a brief overview of my sump system, really quick. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the steps of what it takes for me to do a water change. What's really nice about having a basement sump system and something that you ought to consider if you got the space to do it is that it gives you a lot of options. It gives you a lot of space. It can open up uh, water volume for your system. And in my case, you can set it up where you can actually do a water change pretty easy. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and get started showing you what's going on with my system downstairs in my mad scientist room. Okay, here we are. This is my sump in my sump room. This is directly below the 125 gallon display tank upstairs. This is a six foot long, 125 gallon reef ready system that was converted to a sump. Uh, Flow has a, for main pump, is a Pan World 150 PS. Um, that's pumping the water upstairs. It has a simple manifold to it. I can run a reactor. I'm running currently a UV system on it right now. It has um, the return section, which I just have live rock in. A bubble trap. And a skimmer section where the drains come in. Okay. The heaters are controlled by a simple Inkbird controller. The ATO is an electronic float switch, redundant. And the reservoir is a 16 gallon conical tank with a JBO pump, small submersible pump uh, that feeds the ATO uh, reservoir and allows the system to be replenished with fresh water. Mixing station is two 32 gallon brute uh, trash cans and they're on a manifold as you can see. A small mag pump for recirculation. And um, a basic five stage uh, RODI system for cleaning and polishing up my water. So that's connected to the fresh water side which is this side. Okay, and inside of here I have a float valve. And I always have a power head in here just circulating water. That's me. And that's just something I normally do. And then on the salt water side, pretty simple, pretty basic. I've got increments on the inside of the container and those increments are roughly five gallons for each for each level and that gives me a gauge in which I know how much water is in this uh, for water change. Today we're doing 25 gallons. So I've got 25 gallons of salt water already pre-made ready to go. During the warmer months, I would not heat that. If I tested the temperature of it, it would probably be within about a degree or so of my tank temperature, which is currently running at 78.8. So it's gonna be around 77, somewhere in there. One degree is not a big deal change. Now, here's the magic. With this system, like I said, I plumbed this when I engineered it 
to have a drain on the sump and all I have to do is just turn that valve and drain out the water that I want to do a change with and I plumbed it into my house drain no more packing buckets isn't that awesome I think it is <laughs> but anyway so here's what I do okay so I come over here and I'm getting ready to do the change and up here if I flip the switch that turns off that electronic float switch so now when the water drops in my sump it won't kick on I've got increment lines the current water line and 5, 10, 15, 20 and so on and that tells me how much water is being taken out of the system alright let's, let's get to it, let's do it alright so here we go so I'm going to go over here and something as simple as just turning a valve I'm doing a water change <laughs> alright so I'm going to come over here and this will take a little bit of time so I'll speed this section up a little bit and as you can see the water line is now dropping what's really cool about this system though folks is that everything is still running my skimmer's still running, my heaters are still on, my return pump is pumping water upstairs. Everything is functioning. Nothing's changed. Nothing has changed. Okay, so to speed this up a little bit, you kind of get the idea. Uh, I'm down to five. So it's going to take a little bit of time. So we'll, we'll come back as I get down there, okay? Okay, so I've got 25 gallons in the uh, container with salt water, so I don't want to take it all the way down to 25. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and do about half. So between 20 and 25 is where I want to stop because I don't want to run the mag pump dry as I'm trying to get every last little drop out. Typically, whenever I try to do an exact amount, so if I'm trying to do exactly 25, I would add a, an extra couple gallons to it just because of the manifold and, you know, it's just not going to pump every single last little drop out. But I will show you over in the salt mixing container as we start to pump water back in the system that I actually took a piece of PVC elbow and put that into the bulkhead to be able to suck up the last little bit of water what I can get out of the container so you'll see it here in a second but here we are we got 22 roughly gallons out of the system everything is still running pretty sweet nice okay and just a moment ago I came over here and I shut that valve off okay so here we go now, at one point, I did have this hard plumbed over to the, to the sump, just off of that T right there. Right, eh, right, you know, right there. I had it hard plumbed, but the problem with it would be that the PVC pipe running over to the sump, what would happen is water would actually sit in it, and it would stagnate, so I didn't want that. So I took it off. I may at some point down the road consider redoing that in a way that wouldn't allow the water to actually sit in the pipe but that's for another day all right so what I do right there come over here and I've got I've got a piece of piece of pipe okay and I made uh, a hanger out of PVC with some elbows. I'm going to take that over here and I'll put that in the sump, just like so. Now, on the end of it, take that and put it in here, like so. Okay? Now, all I have to do is shut off the recirculation that goes up inside of here and now just open it up and there you 
There we go, folks. We're filling her up. And once again, this takes a little bit of time. What I've considered doing to upgrade this to make it a little bit, a little bit more, you know, efficient, would be to replace that mag pump, which is a mag three, and redo some of my manifold to accept. that pump. So, let's go over. All I have to do now is walk over here and just watch the water level. Just that simple. And it's going to slowly go up. It takes about maybe about five minutes to refill. It takes a lot less time to drain the water out, obviously because of the, the pipe size, which is roughly about an inch and a inch and a quarter. I believe that's what it is. So we're gonna let it fill up. And we'll come back and I'll show you how we wrap it up. Okay we're back and it looks like it's filling up all the way. I've got a lot of sponges in here. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to come back over here since the water is now back up to the fill line, the water line, and my ETO is not kicking on. We're going to walk over here, and then here we're going to go ahead and turn this off. We're going to close it, and this is what I was talking about. If you look down in here, on the end of my bulkhead, I've got a, an elbow. And that elbow reaches down to be able to get the last little bit of water out of there. Okay, so at this point, all I have to do is take this out. And I usually hang it over here. Okay, and then I take my mag pump and unplug it. And that is it. That was my water change. That's my water change. All in all, it takes roughly about, oh, it'll take me maybe about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes tops um, to drain and refill. Typically every week, uh, I like to do around 10 gallons. Um, my nitrates have been climbing a little bit, so I decided to do 25 at this time, um, which is which is okay. Now you may ask, do I do any any preparation of my water? Do I do any alkalinity adjustments? Do I do any pH adjustments? Any of that that, that kind of thing? No, I don't. I just mix up my salt with the RODI water. I check it with my refractometer. And from there, as long as I have the right salinity, which is 35 parts per million, I'm good to go. I'm, I'm set. Now, what I typically like to do, I don't normally keep salt water made up. Uh, what I typically do is I'll make up just enough of what I want to do for that particular week. And then when I'm done, I'll go ahead and take the salt water side and drain it out. I'll get the rest of the water out of it and dismantle the manifold, take it apart, and then clean all of that, spray everything out in my sink, and then let it dry. When it's dry and I'm ready to do another water change next week, all I have to do is put it all back together again and transfer water from the freshwater side over to the salt water side, how much I want to make, dump in the salt, let it mix overnight, and I'm ready typically for a weekend water change. So that's pretty much it. That's 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 all I really do. Now you may ask, okay, if I'm changing out, like in this case, 25 gallons, I may want to double check my alkalinity. But typically with a water volume of around 185 gallons total, by doing 
10 gallons, it usually doesn't mess with the alkalinity. The pH usually stays pretty stable. So that's basically it, folks. That's my water change. Not much to it. Okay, so that's it in a nutshell. That's how I do water change. And I hope the video maybe sparks some ideas for you. Maybe you can't do a basement sump. Maybe you can't do a water changing station down in your basement. But maybe it sparks some ideas. Maybe, maybe something that could help you improve your system. And of course, I can improve mine. But isn't that part of the hobby? Changing, doing stuff a little bit different. But the way I like to do things is kind of simplistic, old school. And for me, at my age, <laughs> I don't have to pack buckets anymore. So that in itself is a pleasure. It makes it easier for me to be able to maintain my system, to be able to take care of my tank and what's in it. And really that's the end goal for all of us. We want to be able to take care of what we have. We want to see it flourish, grow. So. I hope you got something from the video. Well, this is Flipper's Reef signing off. And I'll see you next time. Fins up.